Now, because romance was actually a historical phenomenon, it originated in the south of France in the 15th century, we know who invented it. Men invented it, more specifically, the chivalric knights of that time and place. And these men invented it for them, for men, not for women. And they invented romance in an attempt to compete with the rich and powerful men of their time for access to the best women. And this is because if a guy couldn't convince a woman that he had something special, something intangible that the king didn't have, there's no way he's getting laid. The truth about romance is that it's a strategy that lower status men have adopted in their attempt to compete successfully with higher status men for women. This is also why romance is a young man's game, because most young men don't have anything to offer women. Men are beginning to wake up and realize that the game is rigged, and men are walking away or they're flipping the script when it comes to the so-called fear or gender. Watch the end of the video to fully understand the implications of men waking up and realizing what's happening as women continue to chase us out of society. Today's video comes from Alexander Grace. His channel is linked in the description so that you can go and check him out and support him. And now let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. So this clip begins with a man asking women if height matters on a man. Let's watch. Matter in a guy? Yes, absolutely. Wait, it does? Step on the scale. Oh! She judges based on height, so we're gonna okay, judge her based on weight. I mean, she's so Don't you think it's embarrassing for short guys? They can't change their height. I'm not, I'm not short, but other guys are short. Don't you think it's embarrassing when a girl's like, you're too short? You don't like fat girls, is that a preference? I, I, don't, I judge based on stuff you can change. And you can change your weight. You can change your weight? Yes, you can change your weight. You can't change your weight? I can't change my height. You can change your weight. Get a haircut and then we'll talk. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Like a I know it's an overused term, but these women were triggered. Like this guy, he broke their brains. Get a haircut. You sound like a douchebag. That one woman, she kept making like moose noises. <laughs> Why did they react that way? I mean, haven't we always been told that women are the fairer sex? Unlike men, women are gentle. They're kind. They're dignified. We're not seeing any of that. We've also been told that unlike men, Women aren't shallow. Men are superficial. They only care about appearances. They just want to know if a woman's hot or not. But women, they're deeper than that. They care about character, substance, personality. They see beyond appearance. Or at least that's how the myth goes. Does the perfect man exist? I don't know yet. I have a man right now that spoils me, but I don't want to date him. Why not? He's five, six. I don't even want to touch him, so... Oh, okay. So yeah, he's just buying me, like, Cartier, and I'm like, thank you. He's 5'6". Like, that's self-explanatory why I wouldn't date him. Ugh, I wouldn't even touch him. He's only good for buying me things. And sadly, this woman is not alone in her superficiality. Look at this graph. You'll see that women will not tolerate being in a relationship with a man that is shorter than them. For the gender that prides themselves on not being shallow, these statistics are pretty damning. And it's not just a matter of women wanting men to be taller than them, because even short women have a preference for very tall men. So does height matter on a guy? Yeah, it does. Like, really tall guys. Like how tall? Like 6'10". 6'10"? Yeah. So they gotta be like NBA? Something like that, yeah. Alright, alright, what about you? I like guys that are 6'6". Six, 6'6"? Six. Six, six? So all tall guys only? Yeah. No short guys? Like, no, no short guys. They don't even have an opportunity to like slide in DMs? No, that's not in my options. Okay, okay. Yeah, no. Do you see how casual this conversation is to them? Like you, as a man, you're watching this, you're thinking, aren't they embarrassed, you know, to say this out loud, to admit this publicly? But what you've got to understand about women is that even when they are dismissing a huge segment of the population based on appearances, they don't think of that as them being shallow. They see it as them having standards. To them, it's empowering. They're so self-involved that they don't even think about the men that they're talking about. They don't think about how judgmental and superficial they're being. They're just thinking about themselves. But that's why this guy gets such angry responses because he 
bursts that bubble. He forces women to confront the reality of who they truly are, and they hate him for it. Observe. Do you judge a guy based on height? Does height matter? Yeah. It does? Yeah. They can't choose whether or not they get to be tall. Well, someone else will love him, not me. So I judge based on things that you can change. For example, how much makeup you wear. Okay. So I got some makeup removing wipes because I love- oh, No, get the fuck out of here. What the hell? Why would you want to take off my makeup? Because you're judging guys based on height. You can see my face. I can't. You got a whole mask What's on. And another. Does size matter in a guy? Yeah. So we're going to measure your waist. Come on. Hold, hold it right here. She's judging guys based on something they can't change. You can't change your waist size. Yeah, that's the point. You're failing. Boom. And here you have guys is what most men encounter. These men are now revealing what men are going through when they jump into relationships with women and the hypocrisy that women put out there into society. You see, standards only exist for women, but men are not allowed to have standards at all. When a man says, well, you're wearing makeup, how about you take the makeup off and let's see what your face actually looks like under the makeup? The response is, you can see my face. No, but that's not your actual face. Let's see your face without the makeup. Suddenly, they become very, very defensive. As soon as men treat women the way that women treat men, women go absolutely ballistic. As soon as, as, soon as men call out the double standards, women go absolutely ballistic. If you notice, these are some very good-looking guys that are calling out women. And of course, these guys are genetically gifted, so more than likely, they would not have a hard time getting into a relationship with a woman. However, to be a true Chad and a true Tyrone, you basically don't give a damn about anyone else, and you take advantage of the situation. True, true Chads and Tyrones are usually broke boys. Broke boys and men who just live off the land, live off the streets. And that's why a lot of them end up broke, poor, and homeless later on. These men could care less about anyone else. But as a man, most men instinctively know that you don't want a woman that is not approachable. There are a lot of, like, for example, these women that are being called out for their behavior. These are women that the average man could not approach. And these same women would then go around and saying, well, we don't know why guys won't approach us anymore. And blah, 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 blah. And they're like, I saw this really beautiful guy and I wanted him to approach me. And I was giving him all of these signals and he wouldn't approach me. Men do not want to approach or be approached by unapproachable women. So if a guy in a wheelchair could not approach you and you could not turn him down calmly and gently, why would I want to approach you? And here's another very important point. If a guy in a wheelchair could not approach you and have a conversation with you, and you would not consider him just because he's in a wheelchair, you won't even listen to him, his story, but you immediately reject him and even tell him off, how dare you approach me? How dare you as a person in a wheelchair approach me? A woman actually did this. A woman actually did this to a man who approached her and he was in a wheelchair and you don't even know how he ended up in the wheelchair. He could have been born that way. He could have had an accident. He could have been a, a former military man who lost the use of his legs while he was overseas serving. They don't give a damn. This is how modern women operate. They have zero empathy for men. They want everything, but they don't want men to treat them the way that they treat men. You have these terrible simp pastors who are saying things like, men should not try to understand women and don't try to understand her. Instead, ask yourself what you can do for her. If you want a woman who is attractive and beautiful, then you have, uh, then you have, sinned, you have committed a sin. You should be looking for a woman whom you can serve. You should not be asking, how can I understand my wife better? You should be asking, how can I serve my wife better? Guys, this is a... These, are, these men, these simps, are the reason why so many men fall into states of poverty and destitution and despair because of the way that they are treated in society and by the evils that they are met by society. Modern women know exactly what they're doing. They absolutely don't care. They do not view men as human beings. You have to understand that men in Western society are H-A-T-E-D more than the cockroach. We are disliked more than the cockroach in Western society. This is how women view us. This is how society views us. And this is the reason why this type of predatory behavior from women towards men can actually happen. More men are waking up and realizing that the juice is not worth the squeeze and that men in society and the dating market 
are at a disadvantage when it comes to relationships. I saw a video from Fresh and Fit recently, and the video basically is discussing how men can now learn to adapt to the predatory dating market that we have today, where men are basically in danger of being taken advantage of, used, and even damaged by women in Western society. Because the dating market has evolved so much where women have all of the power in society and relationships and everything, that women are using these dating markets as a way of living off these men, gaining food and gaining access to resources. They're setting up groups. They're cyber stalking these men. It is a horrible system that women have put into place. And men don't even realize these things. Women complain about online dating and how much it sucks now, but men have no power in online dating. You guys, you have 99... You have, uh, how does it go? 80% of women are all going for the same 1% of men. I'm not the one who's talked, I'm not the only one who's talked about this phenomenon. And I've had simps in my comments who've stepped in and tried to argue against this. I'm not the only one who's talked about, who's talked about the 1% factor, where there are 80% of women who are all choosing the same 1% of men on dating apps. They are excluding 99% of men. And when we talk about this, the simps immediately jump in. No, 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 they're angry. Uh, the, you're, you're, the math isn't mathing. Bro, here's the article. Here's the math. How is it in mathing? Oh, because what you weren't taking into consideration is this other factor. They didn't discuss another factor in the article. I understand, but there's a, there's, there are other things you have to think about and talk about that affects it. So it's not actually like that. Bro, it says it right there, all right, in print. Okay, but yeah, they're, they're, the, the person who wrote the article is also wrong. Okay, so let's do the math together. This plus this equals this. No, 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 angry. You have to, you have to, you have to apply this other type of logic and considerations when you do it. And then you will get, then you will understand that that's not correct. Guys, the Sims, the Sims are trying so hard to stop this from happening for men from for, they're trying to stop men from waking up and realizing just at how much of a disadvantage they are in western society today they don't want you walking away and of course they have nowhere else to go the simps have nowhere else to go guys i have more and more men kneeling getting on their hands and knees and saying angry sama okay because as soon as i tell them get the hell out of here don't watch my videos anymore don't watch my videos don't watch my content leave all right, go where you're appreciated, go where you are celebrated. You are not appreciated, you are not celebrated here. Do not secretly watch my videos and you know who you are if you're listening now and you're a simp and you're, and you're giving me grief and you're, you don't, don't agree with me. Don't listen to the content. Don't benefit from my knowledge. Don't benefit from my wisdom. Don't secretly lurk, all right? Get out of here. If you, dis if you wanna be here, if you wanna stay, you will come on your hands and knees, you will say angry sama and you will humble yourself. You will humble yourself. And I'm seeing a lot more men doing that. Because why is this? Why is the manosphere so rife with simps? Because they have nowhere else to go. Let me explain what's actually happening psychologically to these women in these videos. For years, these women have congratulated themselves and have enjoyed this delusional feeling of superiority as though they are better than men. That's their honest self-image. That's how they see themselves. But this guy with his videos, he is destroying that myth in a really clever way. Because what he does is he takes a woman's preferences and he gets them to consider them through a new frame. Height, size, whatever it is, they're no longer able to see that just as personal empowerment, just as her standards. The way he presents it gets them to see it in a new context because he relates the preference that she's just expressed to a male preference, no makeup, waist size, weight. And then suddenly, possibly for the first time in their entire lives, these women are forced to confront the fact that the preference that they have just expressed is no different from the male preference. In fact, it's arguably worse because as he says, you can change your weight, you can't change your height. If a man is shallow for judging a woman based on her weight, 
then what does that make a woman who's judging a man based off his height? And you can see how angry these women get when they are forced to confront the truth of who they are. I'm not stepping on a scale. I'm not taking off my makeup. That's humiliating. That's dehumanizing. Yeah, that's the point. It's really good satire. When you view a woman's height preference in this context, you see that it completely destroys the narrative that women are not superficial, that they're not shallow, that they don't care about appearance. And women hate that because they have really really enjoyed putting men down, shaming them for being so focused on appearances. For decades, it has been a favorite pastime of women to shit on men because they think men care too much about looks. Now the view has looked pretty good for women up there on their high horse. And every time they shame men, they get to have that rush, that feeling of superiority of like, you're down there, but I, I'm up here. And it's time for that to end. Men are so superficial. Would you date a guy that's shorter than you? Absolutely not. I'd at least six two. At least six two. Yeah. How tall are you? Five five. Five five. Yeah. So six five. two. Well, five six five five. Six yeah. two bare minimum. Yeah, I just like tall dudes. I mean, it must have been within five seconds that she said men are so superficial. Next words out of her mouth. Oh yeah, I wouldn't date a man under six two. I mean, is there? any self-awareness like any at all women who have not yet reconciled inside themselves that they are every bit as superficial and shallow as men and they focus on appearances just as much those women are in for a rude awakening because that self-image that they have as this morally superior being who doesn't care about looks that's not gonna last it can't it's delusional it doesn't exist in reality they don't deserve that positive reputation it's fake they have no right to feel so smug they are just as superficial arguably more so. But I'm arguing that that's actually where the anger comes from. She's not annoyed that people might see her weight. She didn't stand on the scale in any case. What pisses her off is that her self-image has been threatened. That with these questions, she now has to confront the fact that she's every bit as superficial as she's always claimed men are. And women don't want to give up the feeling of superiority that they have. That's like half of their self-esteem right there is just feeling like they're better than men. She wants to be able to say, I don't date men under six foot, while simultaneously saying, all men are pigs, they only care about looks. Sorry, no more. You can't have it both ways. And I hope it's clear that what I'm taking issue with is not the preference, it's the hypocrisy. I'm not going to sit here and shame women for not wanting to date short guys. What I'm saying is that if you're going to allow yourself to have dating standards based on appearances, then you need to let men do the same. If you won't date a guy because he's short, then men shouldn't date a woman because she's fat. You're both making decisions based on appearances. Either both of you are shallow or neither of you are. But why do women have such a preference for tall men in the first place? Observe. Online dating in England is just a complete disaster. I'll tell you why. It's because British men are just so short. And even the small girls want a tall man. I need to feel feminine and I need to feel small and like delicate. Only a tall man can do that. I need to spend the rest of the video explaining this because it goes against what we've been told, right? Like, don't women want to feel strong and empowered? That's the message of feminism that's being crammed down our throats, isn't it? But if tall men have the effect of making women feel small and delicate, why are they so popular? Why do so many women want that? What is the psychological appeal and why are we as men getting these conflicting messages? You see, guys, it's hard to hear this. But it's the truth. It started back in the 70s, and it's been going on even longer than that. But then there was a notion in the 70s that emerged among women, you know, during second wave feminism, that women were better than men and women were superior to men. You know, if you think about this, there's a book that came out called, I believe it was like The Manipulated Man, and their author, her name was Esther. And she talked about the fact that it's actually men who are at vic who are victims in society and it's men who are being taken advantage of in society and used in society and we are manipulated into into doing the bidding of society and the state just based on the premise that we are men and if and and that the state and women are entitled to our value and utility we are shamed and 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 destroyed for just about everything and anything and guys the, the, just the just the men who are trying to be good men are ruined for simply being good men. Society doesn't want good men, all right? Society wants obedient servants. 
that do as they're told. I told you the job of a woman in society is to operate as an agent of the state and to reallocate wealth and resources for men to the state, and they are thereby rewarded for doing so. But I will tell you this. The state does not particularly love women. The state does not particularly favor women. The state gives them special privileges because they are agents of the state. So it's basically a calculated investment. Women are given special privileges. Women are given special special um, allocations of wealth and resources in society. And in exchange, it is their job to reallocate wealth and resources from men to the state. To the state. But there's also more to this that you don't take into consideration. You see, a part of this is not just done to get women to reallocate wealth and resources from men to the state, but it's, all to, it's also done to ensure that women will continue com- continually comply with the state and align itself with the state. Hence, women will continue to vote for the policies that further increase the powers and abilities of the state. That there you go. So this is how they gain political favor among women and continue to keep women voting for systems of government that give women special privileges, but at the same time strip powers from men to remove our basic human rights and freedoms. And it affects both women and men. Women don't take this into consideration because the laws are not applied equally. They are given special privileges. Men are given special punishments, but this this does not necessarily last forever. You see, it's kind of like how marriage works for, with men and women. When the relationship begins, there's plenty of ice cream. Like, for example, you know, you see a truck as a kid, and the truck says, you know, free ice cream. Or it's a van, okay? The van says free ice cream or free candy. Let's go with candy. Free candy. So you go to the van, and oh my gosh, there's all this candy. They, they, they hand you candy before you even get fully, before you even in the van, you're getting candy. They give you just a taste. All right. They give you just a taste and they get you to the van and you're like, oh, my gosh, this I want this. Look at all of this other candy in there. So they, once they get you. So now you're loaded into the van. And once you're loaded into the van and, you know, your hands and legs are no longer able to. Well, let's just say that they are restricted in movement and the door slams, you know, the door slams shut behind you. You know, now there's no more candy. Now you're now there's no more candy. That's how marriage is. Oh, there's plenty of candy in the very beginning of the relationship. All right. They give you tons of candy. But once you're loaded into the van, once your name is signed on that piece of paper, you know, once they have you locked in, once the deed's done and it's official, now there's no more candy. And you can only imagine that you're not going to have a good time. You're not going to have a good time after that. That's the re- that's the reality for men. That's the reality that men end up in but women don't understand that they could they themselves can find themselves in a very similar reality where when the state says that yeah you know no more candy for you not only do they lose all so many rights and privileges and they don't have rights they have special privileges because they could be taken away at any time but their situation ends up becoming even worse than men because while men are designed to not only survive not only thrive in spite of suffering and hardship women are not and while men can still stand up for themselves to at least to a limited degree in this feminized society in this matriarchal society the fact of the matter is women cannot you see the masculine woman believes that she is stronger more powerful smarter superior to men Of course she is. Look at all that she has accomplished. She doesn't realize that she has not accomplished so much. Rather, she has been handed everything. And she continues to be handed everything. And the state has created a system where she can easily gain access to wealth and resources from men because, because the state incentivizes it. The state makes it easy for women to take whatever a man has, to take his children, to take his money, to take everything from him, to take his freedom. What they don't comprehend is that when the door slams shut and the state is like, yeah, all you know, you right now you're getting all of this candy. We're giving you all of the candy. All right. But as soon as they no longer are providing the value to the state that the state wants, all right, and it's a bad deal, it's now becoming a bum deal. Sure, they can continue working as agents of the state, but they're not gonna have they're not going to enjoy themselves the way they were enjoying themselves before. Okay? No more candy for you. 
or just little bit lits little pieces little pieces here and there and you don't seem to understand that going and getting that candy is only going to make your social status worse amongst men in a society where men have now walked away women don't realize that nothing lasts forever and all of the incredible things that they're enjoying will eventually not be there anymore it's very easy for the government to pull the plug and say no more candy for you and they have no friends women have destroyed so many lives through lies, through deceit, through dis to, through through just downright dreadful behavior directed at men, that they don't comprehend that you know every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This is not just the case in say in science, but in it's also the case in social science. You know, you reap what you sow, and what they have sown are seeds of of seeds of dis of of disdain. So many men today no longer trust women. And women themselves are the ones responsible for creating this environment where men no longer trust women. Guys, I want to remind you to go and check out the Angry Guy Clubhouse. Get top expat and password bro travel tips, digital nomad guides, and passive income strategies. Free subscribers get access to videos, podcasts, articles, and community chat. Plus, receive the passive income blueprint just for subscribing. Paid subscribers unlock exclusive guides like the How to Build an Online Business in 24 Hours ebook, Wealth Building Blueprints, and Crypto Updates. Join us now. Click the link in the description below. We're just going to go ahead and jump into some content from Man Guide because I believe this truly reflects some more of the real implications on society that we're seeing as men are beginning to see through the behaviors of women and walk away or just literally go their own way. And Man Guy's channel will be linked in the description so you can go check him out and support him. If someone puts me, like drafts me in the military, I'm so sorry, I'm running the other way. Do you think that men have a duty to defend you while you sleep? Do you think that men would be cowards if they did not go to the draft? I don't, I don't necessarily think they'd be cowards. Well then who would protect you? Couldn't tell you. Do you think that men have a responsibility to show up for the draft? If they're drafted to defend the nation and make sure that you're protected? Yes. Well, then how come you don't? If men who aren't drafted in the military don't protect us, I don't know who's going to protect us. Right. So if they have that responsibility and they're cowards, if they don't go to the draft, right? Somebody has to go. You prefer that it's them over you, right? Yes. It doesn't sound very equal. You're talking about feminism being part of this equality and uh, anti-patriarchy. It would appear that patriarchy is necessary because you want them to go and fight wars on your behalf so that you can sleep at night without uh, having any troubles, right? And you don't want to go fight those wars. <laughs> See, guys, I've said it plenty of times that we're dealing with individuals who are, who are morally corrupt. They don't see us as human beings. We are more disliked than the cockroach in Western society. One of the most dangerous things to ever be uttered in Western society is sacrifice. If you notice, there are videos after videos of sim pastors who are telling men that it is your job to sacrifice. And you shouldn't be at home playing video games. You shouldn't be leaving the workforce. You should be so sacrificing yourself. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to sacrifice. You should find a woman for whom you can sacrifice yourself. Not a beautiful woman, but a woman who needs you. A woman whom you can give everything to. Because that is how you're going to build a legacy. Did I not tell y'all? Did I not tell you that the church is just another form of the state? Didn't I tell you that? Didn't I tell you that the, the, that the streets lead to the church? The church leads to the streets. Only fools leads to the streets. Only fools leads to the church. It's a vicious cycle. One leads to the other. The pastor is nothing more than a PIMP. The ladies of the church are nothing more than bottom chicks. Their job is to reallocate wealth and resources from men to the church. And they are rewarded for doing so. It is a vicious cycle that men need to stay out of. The church that we see today is not even the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus refers to the church as a gathering of believers in Jesus Christ. It is not a building. It is not a religion. It is not an organization. 
That's why they say where two or three are gathered, let there be God. So the modern day church, it is not the church of Jesus. The modern day church is a church built entirely upon the premise of extracting and reallocating wealth and resources from men to the church. This is the reason why they continue, why the church, just like in society, continues to place emphasis upon what men can do for the state, men can do for their country, men can do for their church. But seldomly do you hear about a woman's role in the, a woman's role in the church and in society other than being receivers. Where it is a man's job to give and supplement the living of women and her children and the, and the state, women, her children, and the church. And in return, he will be rewarded in heaven because he shall be given a legacy. His legacy of sacrifice. Guys, this is witchcraft. Saying that you must be sacrificed. You must sacrifice yourself. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. God puts sacrifices to an end. Think about this very carefully. The notion that we have to sacrifice so much of our wages to the church is total BS. And they'll say, oh, it's not a sacrifice. It's just mandated by God. We are commanded by God to give money to the church. That's total BS. Because the church is just a gathering of believers in Jesus Christ. So we are not mandated to give our money to a religious organization that has a tax-exempt status. Think about that very, very carefully. God, Jesus, I cannot say for sure, but Jesus does not ask 10% of us, so why the heck would we be giving 10% to the church? Jesus, everything belongs to him. Everything belongs to God. Jesus is king. God, all everything is God. Everything belongs to the Father. So, how, so they have warped our minds into believing that by giving our money to the church, the modern day church, we are giving it to God, which is absolutely incorrect. Is the church going to be there for you and help you when you're broke? No, it's not. It is an, it is an organization that is just simply designed to extract wealth and resources from you as a man. It could care less about you. And they'll turn around and say that I'm the one I'm out here doing evil. I, guys, that's how they operate. These organizations do not care about men. They are just there to take advantage of us as men. Are you saying now that you don't have girls as friends? Is that what you're saying? Oh, uh, platonic female friends? Absolutely not, no. You don't at no. all? Uh, no. What ends up happening a lot of times when you have female friends is you end up being her emotional tampon. You end up being her solution provider. You end up being her masculine energy. You end up being a lot of boyfriend traits to that girl inevitably because it's just a male instinct right they've done this too why why did women not be allowed in the military infantry for so long because men have a natural prov a provider protector instinct when a woman is you know getting attacked in combat or whatever men are going to spring to action to try to help her and compromise the unit so this is why women have been kept out of infantry and combat position for so long so i say all that to say this if you end up as a friend with a female you're inevitably going to take on boyfriend traits whether you want to or not naturally but her end, she's not necessarily obligated to give you any type of sexual access. So what's happening is it's a one-sided relationship, which a lot of girls that are, you know, put guys in a friend zone, they're able to benefit and get the benefits without the guy getting what he wants. All of you guys right now probably have at least one or two guys that's in the friend zone that would hook up with you in an instant if you called them, but you would never hook up with them. But you're still able to siphon off benefit from them. Men, we don't get it that way. So I look at it like, from a logically sound perspective, Am I going to be friends with a female when I know for a fact I'm not going to get any type of reciprocation? And then on top of that, it's someone that can identify with my masculine problems. It's an L for me altogether. Now, let me make it clear. I don't have to agree with every single thing that Myron says to respect the fact that he comes the closest when it comes to a lot of guys. A lot of you guys don't like Myron. But I'm going to tell you, he's, a, he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right in his presentation. They, guys, they've tried to silence this guy. They've banned him on Twitter. They've, they've demonetized him on Twitter, taken away monetization on YouTube. You know, they've tried so much to silence these men, kick them off of kick. And guys, at the end of the day, it's about speaking your truth and, and, telling, and telling it like it is. And they don't want you to know. They don't want this message out there. They want you to be silenced. They want you to be obedient. They want you to obey.
That's how women want things to be. They don't want men out here showing what female nature really is like, showing that women never wanted equality. This is the reason why I say we should not blame feminism for anything. Feminism is just the concept of equality between men and women. That's something women have never wanted. Women don't want equality. They want superiority and dominance. That's what they want because they believe that they are better than we are. They believe that they are superior, they are smarter, they are stronger. They say these things. But when things actually happen, when hardships actu actually arrive, then they will turn around and say, men help us. But this time, guess what? Men will whisper, no. I told you guys many years ago, women would say, feminism got us everything that we wanted. Now let's fight it together. And of course, what's going to end up happening is they're going to try to have focus groups and they're going to try to have men sit, sit down with men because they need to understand what's going on because these men don't want to work anymore and we need to address the issue. And the only men who are going to show up, it's already beginning to happen, are simps. The only men showing up to these crappy events are simps. Most men today are not getting involved with it. Most men are completely avoiding this crap shoot absolute crapshoot that we are that we are downright witnessing because they realize it's a load of bs they're just trying to use you they don't actually like you they just want to use you for the things that you have and that's it and guys i want you to go and check out the angry crypto academy dive into the world of cryptocurrency with us learn the ins and outs of how crypto works, how to invest smartly, and get our top picks for the best cryptocurrencies. Stay updated with the latest happenings in the crypto world and more. Free users who sign up get a free copy of the crypto blueprint. Paid subscribers unlock full access to all of our comprehensive crypto courses and resources. With inflation eroding the value of fiat currency, it's crucial to learn about and invest in crypto before the financial system collapses around us. Don't wait. Join us now and secure your financial future. Click the link in the description to get started. Men are waking up to the BS and to the scheme. The relationship, the toxic relationship that men are in with the state and with women in society. And hence men are walking away. Women are going to find themselves in increased states of poverty, destitution, and hardship as more men walk away from Western society. Millions of men have already left the workforce and are avoiding dating and marriage as, as a whole. What do you guys think regarding everything we've discussed here today? Women have chased men out of society, and they are going to soon feel and experience the implications of having done so. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA men walking away. And cheers.